In this video, I want to give an introduction to forces. Now, thankfully, in physics, what we mean by a force uh, is is represented pretty well by what we mean in the everyday language of the force. It's and and so in that way that helps sort of our intuition when it comes to understanding. So in this video, as sort of an introduction to forces, what I'd like to do is is uh, give some characteristics for forces as well as uh, some help on how to identify what they are. Okay, so the the first sort of characteristics of a of a force is it's some sort of push or pull that acts to change the motion of an object. So I, I'm going to put these out there and then talk about the, the key points of what that means. Motion of an object. Of course, the, the key word here is to change the motion. If something is moving or at rest, or if something is moving, it doesn't need a force to move, but a force is necessary to change the motion of an object. Um, the units of force is uh, Newton, is the, the unit, and we'll talk a little bit later of how that unit is represented in terms of units that we already know. But so that's sort of a, a characteristic of a force, and that is consistent with our sort of underday, everyday understanding of, of what we mean by forces. The second characteristic is, is that we are going to classify our, our forces, uh, forces uh, into types, into types. So each type of force is going to have a descriptive name. For example, gra gravitational is a type of force, or a contact will be a type of force. And what's important about that is each type of force is going to have with it its own model. What do I mean by that? And what I mean by that is, is that forces don't really come with their own equations. That's not to say that there won't be equations that will represent, that will mathematically represent what the forces do. But you must uh, be able to understand the model that we're going to have for each force to be able to apply it correctly. And so, when we talk about each type of force, we're going to type about the we're going to talk about the model by which we're going to represent that force and how to use that model to create a mathematical representation to apply to physics problems. Okay. So the the third characteristic of a force that's that's key is. Uh, Every force has an object and agent, and this is, is going to come back uh, again and again. It has an object and an agent. It is the agent acts through this force on the object. So when we study forces, often what we want to know is we want to know how the force is affecting some object. But in many times it's crucial to know not just the, the object on which the force is acting, but the agent that is uh, creating the force. Okay, so that, that sort of leads us to a a useful tool. Let me let's talk about that now. A useful tool to use when we talk about forces is that every force can be written in this type of sentence. The blank force on the blank by the blank. <laughs> and I'll, I'll use this uh, a couple of times, where 
in this one, this is the type of force, for example, the gravitational force or the contact force, on the, this is the object, by the, and this is the agent. So in the most simple example, I have some ball that's falling, and if I want to know the force that is accelerating this ball towards the ground, I would say it's the gravitational force on the ball by the Earth. The Earth is the agent exerting a gravitational force on the ball. And, and so if you cannot construct, if you're trying to analyze forces on a system and you cannot construct a sentence of this type, either that force is not really there or you don't have a full understanding of what uh, that force is. Okay, so that's a handy tool that we'll use when talking about forces. Now, uh, another characteristic that's very uh, important to know, only special forces and we'll call these long range forces act without the agent and object touching. I see you there. And so, uh, so what does that mean? So, for example, the only long-range force that we will be uh, discussing when, when we do mechanics is going to be gravity. Gravity is one of these long-range forces. It acts over a distance, and it is the only one, which means unless the force you are considering is gravity, the agent and the object must be in physical contact. And so this one fact, let's, let's put this down, um, unless we're talking about gravity, agent and object must be in physical contact. So this will, will be a very, another he really helpful tool to make sure we identify all the proper forces on an object. Okay, so let's use these characteristics to try to um, identify forces in a couple very simple examples. So let's say I have a person and they throw a ball and so at some point the ball is at the height of its trajectory and the question is what are the forces on this uh, on the ball at the point when it's at the the top of its trajectory let's we'll give a multiple choice here there's the force of the throw there's the force of the motion. Ah, see, see, I'm going to get ahead of myself here. Force of the motion. We'll have, we know it's accelerating, it's changing its trajectory, so the force of the motion change, or gravity, well, or and or, these are all possible, or others. This is sort of a, a, a common question we might ask to try to identify forces. So what sort of forces are acting at the ball when, when it's at this point? What about the force of the throw? Certainly there was a force on the ball when the person threw it. But the moment the ball left the person's hand, then the hand was no longer in physical contact. The force of the throw, what is the agent? The agent is the person. Once the ball leaves the hand, the person and the ball are no longer in physical contact, and so there is no longer the force of the throw. So at the top of the trajectory, there is no force of the throw acting on the ball. 
what about the force of the motion? The object is moving. However, we know that forces uh, cause changes in motion. Forces aren't, aren't necessary uh, for motion. And also, if you look at, if you think about, well, what about the force of the motion? What is the agent in that case? There is no agent. We already talked about the person is the here this force of the throw, but there's no agent associated with this sort of amorphous force, and so we know that that's that that can't be one. What about the force of motion change? We know it's accelerating, so there is some sort of uh, change to the motion while it's going through the air, and so what about that force? Well, there is certainly a force acting on the object which is changing its motion, but you have to ask yourself, what is the agent for this force? And if you can't come up with an agent for that force, and, and there isn't, this is describing an effect, it's not describing a force, then it is not a real force. There's no way to describe the force of motion change is on, you know, by what. And so that's not a force either. So that brings us back now to gravity which we know is acting on the system. There's a gravitational force on the ball by the Earth, and so this is a real force, and it, acts, it can act over a distance, so the fact that the Earth isn't touching the ball isn't a problem. The Earth is down here, since the Earth is a long-range force, so we can say that gravity is acting on the ball. So what about others? Well, gravity is the only long-range force that we have. And so a handy tool, if we want to look at this object, is to draw sort of a square around that object. And are there any other agents in physical contact with that object? Because they have to be in physical contact to uh, create a force other than gravity. And well, you can say, and, and in fact there is, we, if if we think about this ball flying through the air, there are all these little air molecules in the air that are all in physical contact with the ball while it flies through the air. And that's true. And those molecules create a force on the ball, and which we call a drag force. And we'll talk about drag force sometime later. That gets complicated, and I don't want to complicate the discussion at this point. So until otherwise noted, we're going to assume there is no air resistance. We can ignore the forces of all the little molecules. So absent the air, there is no other object in physical contact with the ball so that um, there aren't any other forces other than gravity. Okay, let's look at one more example. Imagine we have a person, well, let's, yeah, we have a person, and they're standing on a box. The box sits on a table, and the table is in an elevator. The elevator is attached to a cable that goes over a pulley, which is attached to a wench that pulls it up, and this wench is run by another person, well, let's go to the arms on the wench, which is accelerating the elevator up. So here's Bob is in the elevator, Alice is on the wench, and the question is, what are the forces on Bob? Forces on Bob. Well, let's go, let's see, Alice ex is exerting a, a force on the wench. Does Alice exert a, a, f a force on, uh, on Bob? No, Alice is not in physical contact. What about the wench? The wench is exerting a, a force on the cable as it cranks through lifting the elevator up. Is the wench exerting a force on Bob? No, wench is not in physical contact. What about the cable? The cable is certainly lifting the elevator up. Is the cable exerting a force on Bob? No, because the cable is not in physical contact with Bob. What about the elevator? The elevator is the object going up. Is that exerting a force on Bob? No, because the elevator is not in physical contact with Bob. What about the table? No, 
because that's not either. What about the box? Alas, we have an object in physical contact with Bob. Again, if we use this sort of key where we draw a little circle, well, a circle, a little line around the person that we're interested in, in looking at, in this case, Bob, the only forces on Bob are going to be gravity and due to agents that are in physical contact with Bob. So the box is the only object in physical contact with Bob and so the box is, is exerting a force and then finally the second force is gravity which is a long-range force it does not have to be in physical contact so gravity is exerting a force as well so these are the only two forces acting on Bob the force due to gravity from the earth on Bob and a contact force from the box on Bob and so those two forces. Now Alice is certainly exerting a force on the wench, and the wench is exerting a force on the cable, the cable is exerting a force on the elevator, the elevator is exerting a force on the table, and the table is exerting a force on the box, because all of those objects are sequentially in contact with each other. But if we're looking for the forces on Bob, it is only gravity and those forces due to agents in physical contact, which in this case is the box.